All right, guys, so today we're doing something a little bit more, I don't know, mainstream, a little bit easier, bolt on, they say. So uh, we're gonna be putting a snorkel on this here PX1 Ranger. This is Ollie. Hello, hello. This is his uh, work slash off-road rig. Yep. So, uh, was it 2013? 2013, yeah. Yep. So had the car for a year or so now and just, yeah, setting it up for how I like it. And today's little mission is snorkel. So we'll go, uh, we'll go unbox Carl. that pretty soon. Give me a hand. <laughs> so as you can see, he's on 33s, the BF Goodrich KMO2s. Yeah, KM2s, yeah. Um, got a two inch lift in it. Um, yeah, long range fuel tank, reverse camera, just a couple of little extras, nothing too major. Got a winch on the front. Um, yeah, that's about it, yeah, really. Yeah, goes well. Just put a throttle controller on it, which Made definitely feels, feels oh, different. so worth getting. How's it on fuel? Because it's been probably uh, four weeks since yeah, you did that. It's gone up a little bit, but it just depends what mode you set it on. And yeah. I don't know. Having it on the power mode or the race mode just makes it so much more reactive. I definitely yeah. would recommend just... Yeah, so I, I actually, I spoke to Ben about how that works, and yeah. it's um, basically demanding more than what your pedal... So your pedal is like the actual modulation but when you say put it on race mode when you go 50 percent throttle it gives it 100 percent throttle right gotcha essentially yeah. so. i can see it's definitely going to be worthwhile off-road yeah and, like just yeah it doesn't give you any more power away. but it definitely just reacted it the feels reactive. a lot i drove it and it it feels a lot better yeah. so worth getting worth getting yeah 100%. anyway we're not plugging throttle controls on this no, i could do that one come on <laughs> <laughs> let's uh let's go have a look at this snorkel eh all right let's give it a crack So I got some new rubber for the van too. Sorry? Got some new rubber for the van. Very nice. How good does that look? Yeah, um, probably the smallest off-road tires you can get, but... The old KO2s. So, oh, the box is already open. The old unboxing of the snorkel. Voila! Ta-da! So yeah, I went with uh, Axis Fabrication for this one. Um, so yeah, we'll see how she goes on gonna look pretty mint. Wicked. It does look pretty nicely finished. Nice small fusion. I wonder if they're a machine weld even. Pretty nice. Wicked. So the stencil that comes with it is for a PX2? Yeah I have a feeling a PX2. It doesn't line up exactly with like where this garden stuff is but um We'll just have a play with it. I'm sure we'll be able to make it work. It's pretty close to like the bonnet line. Yeah. You can just see that this is out a little bit, but I sort of trust that that will be pretty close well, to what we want. Well, yeah, that does seem to be consistent. Yeah, it's just this line and as well. And this is what they sent you for a PX1, wasn't it? Yeah, they said um, the stainless snorkel that I bought was for a PX1 and a PX2, so obviously okay, sweet. they both fit. All right, so the first step is, well, Ollie's gonna pull out the inner guard. So that's kind of where you got to access all the, all the pipe work. So basically the snorkel goes in and then the pipe work kind of runs through the inner guard and then out to the air box. So while Ollie's doing that, I'll have a look through this box and show you guys what you get. So firstly, you got a bag of um, basically hose clamps, a bit of stainless four inch as a kind of male coupler by the looks of it. Uh, some pinch weld, some stainless fasteners. Got a bit of accordion hose. Got a four inch to three inch adapter by the looks of it. Yep. Got the snorkel itself, obviously. And a nice access fabrications decal. All right, so back over to the inner guard here, you can see there's these, if you've worked on cars before, you know how annoying these stupid trim clips are, but essentially it's a little Phillips head that's plastic and easy to strip. So uh, you're meant to kind of back it out and then it, show us this one down here, Ollie. She's gone. Yeah. That's essentially how it's meant to work, but 50% you know, of the time it doesn't. So be prepared, you may have to just wrench them out. And you can buy replacements, but yeah, we'll see how we go. But you've got to take basically your mud guard off, which sandwiches the inner guard. And then there's, what, just a few? Yeah, and down the bottom. And some down here. So that's pretty easy stuff. If you've got a lift like Ollie does, you won't even have to really take the wheel off, hopefully. So yeah, 
get these off and see what we're dealing with. All right, so with the guard out, we'll uh, show you guys that in a sec, but uh, basically disconnect your MAF sensor. It's time to, we have to take the air box out completely. Yeah, it's just two screws over the back here. So whip easy, that out. Easy. How's it feel working on a car, Ollie? Mechanically, somewhat mechanically. Pretty nervous about it. <laughs> <laughs> See how it goes. So Ollie's a cheapie like me, but new to cars. So what size are we looking at, 10 mil? Looks like smaller. So is it an eight? Correct. <laughs> so before undoing the airbox, it's probably easier just to take the lid off. So obviously just disconnect this hose clamp, pull that off, and then the lid will just pop off, filter comes out, give you a bit better access. So. I think a footstool would help the most out of everything right now. Definitely. So once you've got the airbox loose, before you can pull it out, you'll notice that there's a, a little plastic connector that will just pop out, just a little slotted screwdriver and it'll pop the um, connector that holds the MAF sensor wiring harness off. And there's also a, a clip down here, hopefully you can see, that holds this hose, whatever it is, holds that hose to the air box there. So. And then the final piece of the puzzle is just remove the hose clamp that goes out through the guard and we're starting to make headway. Made it. Great success. Alright. Fuck. Bit of dirt in that. Oh jeez, look how much <laughs> it necks down. <laughs> that's tiny. So even that's killing your turbo sound. It's like two and a quarter inch I reckon. Up to three inch. What right. a joke. And pro tip guys, cover up any orifices, including your turbo inlet, so uh don't want to be dropping shit down into that. All right, so we're getting to the business end. See some uh, blue painter's masking tape in all the areas where you're gonna have to draw and cut and drill. All the fun stuff. Yeah. Yep. Reckon that'll be enough there? <coughs> yep. yep. All right, offer it up, show us what we're looking at. Yep, I reckon that's the go. What is it, is it meant to go up to there? Well, yeah, there's that line. Yeah, because that looks more like it. Yeah. Oh, actually, that's looking way better now that the bonnet's up. And that line, that does look like it's lining up way better. It so, is. Yeah. So they have got it sweet. They've done well. Okay, I'll take I'll, it back. I'll edit that first bit out. <laughs> okay, so with the bonnet up, that's where you need to go to, yeah. with the guard there. Yeah, that's way better. Cool beans. So how are we meant to trace this? Are we meant to Stanley it out? And yeah. Then yeah, I'll cut this out and then we can just trace it straight on. Awesome. I think that'll be the go. It shouldn't be too bad. There is a shit ton of room up in the old guard here, so... Didn't have too much luck with the old clip, so... <laughs> I think we got two out of ten, maybe. Yeah, we didn't have the patience for that. <laughs> well, they're just shit. Yeah, they didn't No matter them. what you did, they would have just fucked out, so... Oh, well. So be it. As I was saying to Ollie before, what, what you can do is, because um, you need a nut cert, which we'll get to shortly to um, rivet, we'll bolt this in, but what we could do is put like a five mil nut cert in these and use like a nice kind of stainless button head screw or kind of a countersunk with a concave washer to mount them back up nicer. So might do that if we've got some lying around until this man's cut some chip rock before. <laughs> Oh, fish, he yeah. just ditched it. <laughs> Pressure's on, mate. When the camera's on. Not bad, mate. I'll give you yeah. a 9 out of 10 for that. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Tick of approval. Alrighty, we'll get some tape and just tape it on, I suppose. Yep. Try and hold it flat. Alright, mate, you're committed. Once it's in permo, it's permanent. <laughs> if you didn't know. than it needs to be and then we'll just no, no we'll go bigger no but like <laughs> i don't want to go too big too soon 
Like, it would have been sweet if they had, like, a centre hole. You did really well on that drawing, dude. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> you stitch up. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I should blur that out. I don't know. <laughs> Any kids watching? Uh, yeah, nice one. We better cut that out pretty the soon. The old dick and balls, eh? Yeah. <laughs> they did well. Alright, so we've gone to the old hole saw collection. What are we looking at? It's probably a 90. Yeah, 92. Yeah. That's my favourite downlight cutter. Arthur's still got some sharpness to it. That'd be sweet. Oh, is it a pube or? <laughs> <laughs> I've really, I've, I've stitched that. It's that one. <laughs> that just looks like another one. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. But anyway, if you do a pilot hole first, you know that you're going in the right spot instead of trying to like start it, have a bit of a start, and then it'll wander off. And it may not be right, so. Let's give it a crack. This is officially committed. Out of, out of the field, drilling into the car. I'm not thinking about the, it. The outside service. I don't know. Hopefully, this goes to plan. It's all right. It'll be it's all right. All right. So now we're really committed. Far out. So just ease it in slowly because it'll pull in as you know. Alrighty. It's looking pretty good. I think that's the go. That <laughs> no, would be good. That's the spirit. Alrighty. Look, I can I can weld pretty well, so worst case I can just tig it back in. And we got some builders bog in the car. Alrighty. Just get some white bunning spray paint, and you never know, mate. You're a G up. Now for the shaft. <laughs> Work it. Ollie's got himself a nibbler mm, attachment for the drill, so. These things are really good. Use them a lot for roofing and kind of cheap metal. As you can see, up and down, it basically just punches out little half moons that really hurt when they get in your foot. <laughs> yeah, down, down the edge of your boot. <laughs> Not fun. So um, before we get on that, we'll um, Sigaflex up this airbox joint so that can dry. The old 11FC dries pretty quick these days, so that's good. All right, so we got the Sigaflex ready to go. 11FC is the best because this stuff, when you work it with, uh, I like to work it with turps. When you work it with turps, it doesn't kind of run everywhere like the Sigaflex Pro. This stuff also dries a lot faster and just all in all a better, better product from Siga. All right, so we're using some uh, Scotch Brite to rough up the surface just so it has something to kind of etch into as it adheres. It would be right without doing so, but it has to make sure it's sticking nicely. This stuff does does stick really well to pretty much everything. And then uh, and just some more wax and grease remover. Take all that excess off. I'd get in all these as well. Yeah. This is where it gets a bit messy, but if you use this secret spray like me, it's actually just turps in a spray bottle. Works really well for Sika. As you can see, it kind of stops it sticking to everything else. It also glides off your finger and uh, essentially just kind of works. Works like magic. All right, guys, so this, as we'll show you before, is a nibbler. How much was that, Ollie? Uh, I think it was $20, not much. That is really good. From Bunnings, yeah. So you can buy dedicated standalone nibblers or you can buy the attachment for the drill. We just did a bit of a test then and it seems to work really well. So I, I would definitely advise getting one of these. It does beat tin snips. 
10 steps are good, it'd be good to finish off, but I find with 10 steps sometimes it'll crack the paint. Yeah, bend on it. On the edges. Yeah, yeah. depend. You also have to them. know which ones to use and yeah. how to use them. But I can just, just do it, man. Just do it. Good. That? That's pretty fucking good, eh? <laughs> you can tell that at home as well. <laughs> a little memento. <laughs> Dude, we were just talking about it. I could feel them falling down my shoe. The half moons. Oh, yeah, they are. I can feel them all. <laughs> Don't do these in your thongs. Not a good time. <laughs> What's your frothing level? <laughs> we're not done yet. <laughs> So you like mid froth? <laughs> mid froth. Like six? Yeah, about six. We'll send it at six yeah. at the moment. For those of you who don't know tin snips, there are different colours and there are different colours for a reason. So the reds are basically the off cut on the left, the Ish. greens are off cut on the right, and yellow is straight. Somewhere in like that. Yeah, so obviously this stencil is basically a bare minimum kind of cut to get you started. So, yeah, because we use a 92 mil hole saw, that, that's you know, about 10 mil under four inch, so what you would want for four inch, so what we do is elongate this whole yeah. circle area. Guys, another pro tip coming at you. So, we have to get obviously the right, the right size, so you may as well get the actual silicon coupler that's going on because the four inch is the... OD of the pipe, ID of this. So if you trace around the OD of this, you're gaining an extra five mil either side, which will be enough for your uh, your pinch weld that comes with it. Yeah. And should be enough to get the pipe in the car. So as you can see, just kind of hold it on and just trace around it, and then we can cut that out. And it's just a matter of uh, chipping away at it, and little by little, as you do certain things, we'll get the pipe closer in and we'll start to see what needs to happen. Right, so we're looking pretty good I reckon, so we'll put the pinch weld on and fit this up. This firstly gives us a real life kind of idea of how it's going to fit with the pinch weld because that's how it's going to finish and also it stops you scratching up your brand new powder coat. So make sure it's spread out against all the, the edges and bottom or top, I'll just take a bit more out of, I suppose. So I'm thinking that's about what we need to take out to get this to fit. All right, so round two, we're looking pretty close. It's actually, well, it's in the hole now. It's uh, looking good on the A pillar. So what we're thinking is we're a little bit open here. So we might kind of elongate this part of the circle to bring this forward which will then put this, this section, which is hitting, hitting under here, that'll put that down in this, this bit here. And the rest of it's looking pretty good. Maybe a tiny bit sculpted on the top here, but it seems to be sitting pretty nice. Well, I'm thinking we got this pretty good. Yep. It is a little bit disappointing that they didn't give us a little bit extra pinch weld because it looks like they'd supplied it for the template, but this did not fit through the cut for the template because we were we were bang on. Yeah. So we're a tad short. You can obviously manipulate this and bring it in, um, which is good. That's the beauty of this stuff. You can kind of 
pushing in to, to fit nicer to the snorkel, but yeah, hopefully we can kind of bring something from around the backside and push it around to, to close up this inch or so that's still open, but yeah. I don't know, I feel like you can play for, for hours trying to get this. I'm pretty happy with it. All right, so final test fit's done. We are pretty happy with this. This is pretty much the best spot for the join in the pinch weld. Um, so, yeah, once it's on there and it's shadowed and all that stuff, it'll, it'll look pretty good. So, yeah, looking good. We just tidied up all these dags with the tin snips and, uh, yeah, pull this paint off and we can paint her up. Did I say we can pull this paint off? So, primed, ready to go. So, what we end up doing is bit of spray paint on the paintbrush and then yeah. just kind of wipe it. So yeah, that's looking looking pretty good with the A-pillar. Yeah, doesn't need to go left or right. No, I reckon closer to the car. You can mark the centers of those. Yeah, I reckon. I'll come and um, swap positions with you in a sec and you can have a look. Then we'll show you all how to use a nut cert. Spelt S E R T, not C E R T, if you're trying to find them on eBay. All right, guys, so what we're going to do now is put some nut certs in the A pillar. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a nut cert is, I suggest you find out because you're going to need them. But uh, essentially, it is like a rivet that has about all right, guys, so. I'm just watching this footage back and uh, it's that kind of heart dropping moment where you realise that the audio is fucked out. So what I'm going to do is try and dub some new audio, obviously I'm not there, this is post production, it's not meant to sound good but I'm going to try and say what I was actually saying in the video so that you can actually hear and the footage isn't wasted because it's kind of important. Alright guys, so this is a nut cert, you can see here there is a knurled section and then it's like a flat section so the head of the nut cert sits against your bodywork or whatever you're, you're nut certing and then that will squash so i've got one in here which i'll pull out which i can demonstrate how it works so this one i prepared earlier you can see it's already been squashed so that will essentially squash down onto the, the sheet metal work and hold itself in and essentially giving you 10 mil worth of thread in something that may be one two you know mil thick so essentially it just winds onto the gun like this against the, the stop there and basically you just pull the handles together, it will squash the nut set and bobs your uncle. So there is another way that you can do it without the gun. Uh, this is my one that I use for 8mm ones. Uh, I find that for 8mm or bigger you're going to need something like this anyway, especially for steel. But it essentially does the same thing. Um, the bolt winds into the nut set with the spacer and squashes it out. But nonetheless, this thing's good to go, so uh, why don't we throw some nut certs in the A pillar? And I suppose I can probably check what diameter it is. Mm. Yep, about 9mm. Man, it's funny how I'm like talking and my mouth doesn't even line up with what I'm saying. How cool is that? It's like I'm, you know, like a mime, but I'm not actually. So we've got our 9mm holes drilled, um, a little trick, sometimes you get some burrs on this so if you just get a countersink bit, um, if you don't have a countersink bit you can use like a bigger drill bit but just be careful because if that bites, which it probably will pretty quick with thin gauge metal like this, it, yeah just be careful. But essentially we've got our nut cert here, it's very very close so as you, as you can see if I've got this wound all the way in got about two mil of the threaded section hanging out and on this it's kind of holding the nut cert out so what I've done is just wind the nut cert out to where it is and then wind this bit out so we're just kind of shifting that whole whole thing further down so we can get this seated nicely um, so we shouldn't have yeah all these are looking yeah we're looking good so uh, 
just essentially put this in here, tighten it down. You don't want to go too hard because you can actually strip the threads, more so with aluminium, but you need to make sure that it's also firm enough. So the last thing you want is the thing to rotate while you're trying to put the bolt in or take it out because essentially you're fucked. So we're ready to run the pipe from the snorkel to the airbox, but we've got this little bracket up here that we're gonna to have to cut off, I think. Uh, this other one should be all right, but this one, I think we're just gonna cut it straight through with the grinder. So uh, yeah, Ollie can get onto that. got here this uh, three inch reducer elbow coupler so this leg is obviously a little bit too long so I'll show you guys a bit of a, a trick to uh, make this a bit easier a bit of a three inch pipe I've got tons of this lying around so it's no drama you basically push that in nice and true actually because that's a bit loose we'll uh, clamp that on Kind of just eye it and make sure it's coming out nice and true. So we'll head over here, we've got a sharp Stanley knife and essentially you just want to feel where the edge of that tube is and plunge it in. And then once it's in there, you just got to follow that edge of the tube around using it basically as a ruler. And yeah, I've had great success with this. You can actually buy expensive tools just for this job, but if you take your time and get it set up right, this works perfectly. And you'll see in a sec, when I'm finished, it's basically perfect. Do look at that. Bloody marvellous. There we go. So we've got the 4 inch to 3 inch coupler in. So we had to basically put the clamp on the airbox first, slip the coupler on, and then with another pair of hands kind of finagle it back into place. So then the only thing that's left to do is essentially put the four inch piece of tube supplied in the end here, clamp that on, and then also put the accordion hose from the snorkel down to the silicon elbow. And just like that, it is done. So that is what we are finished with. It's turned out pretty nice. Everything's all in, tight. Uh, all the hose clamps are easy to get to, relatively. And you'll also see that we've put some M5 nut certs in to replace those crappy plastic clips. So these will essentially enable it to go in and out now without having those stupid clips fuck out and have to drill them out, etc. So that's that. Alright guys, so there you have it. Sounds pretty good. We'll, uh, we'll take it for a drive in a sec, go get some lunch. I've got the camera rigged up so we'll get some footage of it under load, spooling up. So uh, yeah, hope you liked it. If you haven't already, check out my other videos. I've got plenty of cool custom stuff. Um, I've got the surf over there which is getting plenty of crazy custom stuff. I've got the van, that's nothing too special. And if you like fast cars, I've got plenty of them as well. So 
stay tuned, check it out, and uh, make sure you subscribe and smash that like button. So, yeah, let's take it for a drive. It's definitely not like mine. Mine's like ridiculously loud. But. Yeah. No, all in all, pretty stoked. It's awesome, man. Frothing levels are high now. Yeah. <laughs> are we at a 10? Yeah, we're at a 10. Awesome. Well, sounds good to me. <laughs>